In this unit, we're going to be focusing on enzymes and how enzymes work, what they specifically do, how they can impact activation energy and reaction time. Let's go ahead and get started by doing a little background. First of all, what is energy? We know that energy is the ability for basic terminology, ability to do work. It's the ability to cause matter to move or change. That is the ability to do work. Every life process, every process by an organic organism, insects, plants, animals, needs energy for these processes to function. How they get the energy? Where does it come from? The sun. We know that the sun is the ultimate source of energy. Things that can make their own energy, plant life has things called has have cells organelles called chlorophyll they can convert that into a usable form and then other things other organisms eat those plants and other animals and other organisms to get that energy all right now how energy works or how energy is obtained is chemical by through through chemical reactions when sunlight is taken in for example by a plant to convert that sunlight energy into a usable form chemical reactions have to occur uh, what a chemical reaction is, is there are bonds between compounds that hold together parts of a molecule. When you break these bonds or form these bonds, this is when energy is going to be, or this is when a chemical reaction is going to occur. You break the bonds or you form the bonds. Looking at a very basic uh, formula for a chemical reaction, you always are going to start with reactants of a chemical reaction. Once these reactants react together, form bonds or break bonds, then what the result is are the products. So if you look at this formula, a very common formula, you're starting with a compound. We should recognize this compound as a carbohydrate. This particular carbohydrate is a monomer carbohydrate. It is glucose. It is going to react with oxygen and is going to produce carbon dioxide and water. Okay. Now when you focus on us, you focus on animals, we have metabolism. What metabolism is, is the sum of all those chemical reactions that occur in our body. So every chemical reaction that is taking place in every cell in our body, forming bonds, breaking bonds apart, trying to get energy, uh, that process is, is our metabolism. All right. What our metabolism involves, it involves breaking down foods that we eat, like our hamburger. And once that metabolism starts to break that down, it can access that energy. It can also build new compounds for us. And those compounds that are built for us come from the foods that we eat. So if we eat a lot of fatty foods, a lot of compounds are going to be built as a result. are going to be fats. That's a common example. Our metabolism is just that process that break that runs all the chemical reactions and it's there to try to help remove the energy from the foods that we eat. Okay, so what the energy it's removing is in a little molecule called ATP. The ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. So it's a, it's a molecule that contains three phosphates that's where the tri part comes, fr comes from, and an aden adenosine molecule. So it contains adenosine and three phosphate molecules is ATP. This is that molecule of energy that is being removed from the foods that we eat through our metabolism. That energy then is going to be able to be used for cellular processes, for breathing, for cell growth, for cell repair, to repair organs to make more blood, uh, to help carry waste away from, the, from our body. So all of those processes um, that are involved in our body is going to be powered by these ATP molecules, these energy molecules. Okay, so we're looking at chemical reactions. What is needed to make a chemical reaction work? What do you need to, say, roll a boulder down a hill? to start a campfire. Same thing that you need to start a chemical reaction. You need energy. OK. 
okay? Without energy, our chemical reactions won't occur. Without chemical reactions, organs stop working, functions start working, and we die. So we need energy for these chemical reactions to work. Now there's a specific type of energy to make these chemical reactions in our body start. And it is called activation energy. Activation energy is the type of energy to get those chemical reactions started in our metabolism so we can access energy from the foods we eat. And this is kind of how it works if you look at this graph. You have the reactants in a chemical reaction. You keep putting energy in these reactants and energy and you keep putting more energy. It's kind of, kind of like filling your car up with gas. You keep putting more energy and more energy and more energy and more energy and eventually it's going to reach a point to where that reaction starts and products start to be produced. Okay, once we reach that breaking point to where we've produced enough energy to replace the energy that we've put into our reactants, then everything that's left over is energy released and we get to use that excess energy for movement, for thinking, walking, all those other life processes. So how this works again, you have your reactants, we put energy in those reactants until they react. Once they react, then we start getting energy from the reaction. Once the energy we put in is balanced with the energy that we get back, anything left over is going to be energy released that we get to use. So however long it takes for those reactants to actually react, however much energy it takes to make those reactants react is called the activation energy. This takes a long time. We've talked about this before. It definitely takes a long time. So we need to make sure that w these re reactions occur quickly enough. We, have in, we, we make this activation energy happen a lot quicker so we get energy back to us a lot faster so we can carry out a lot of processes. How do we speed it up? We lower that activation energy, which means we make, we make it take less energy to cause this reaction to occur. So if we can lower that activation energy, we have these reactants, and we can make it to where it takes less energy to make them react, so we get energy out of it a lot faster. We speed up the reaction if we can do that. If we can lower that activation energy, we can speed up that reaction. Things that do that, okay, things that help lower activation energy for chemical reactions in our metabolism so we get energy quicker are called enzymes. Look at the black part of this graph. This is a normal, you have reactants, we pump, pump in a bunch of activation energy, eventually it reaches that point to where they react and they start giving us energy back. Look at the red part of the line. You add an enzyme to the process. That enzyme lowers the activation energy, so it takes less time for those reactants to react, therefore giving us back more energy quicker through our metabolism, and we get that energy faster. So enzymes are important for this process. They help lower that activation energy. They help these reactions start faster, give us our energy quicker, because it takes less energy for it to happen. All right, these enzymes, these catalysts, these proteins, they help lower activation energy. They can be inorganic, they can be organic. We have the organic catalysts, we call them enzymes. Okay, we know that these enzymes are just substances that help speed up these chemical reactions. They are proteins. Here's another shot of it. Same thing we just looked at. All right. How do enzymes help maintain homeostasis? How does it help maintain that balance between the inner workings of the system and its external environment? Well, without enzymes, chemical reactions wouldn't occur quick enough to sustain life. We've mentioned this before. Life needs a lot of energy and it needs it quick. And these reactions take too long, so waiting on those reactions, we life would just cease to exist because we wouldn't get our energy quick enough. So enzymes are vital to make sure that these reactions occur quick enough, our metabolism functions quick enough to make sure we get energy for functionality. And here's how enzymes work. Kind of like a lock and key. We know that there's only one particular key 
that fits one particular lock. So one enzyme is going to work for one particular process. You can't really have two enzymes or multiple enzymes for the same process and you can't have one enzyme unlock a lot of different processes. You're going to have one key for one lock. And we have some fancy terms that we call these things. The key is going to be something called a substrate. And a substrate is what the enzyme unlocks or what the enzyme works for. Okay, the enzyme for the pitcher is kind of like the lock. The, the substrate is like the key. There's a specific enzyme that's able to function for that specific substrate to make that substrate function better or quicker. Here's a little animation. Okay, this little enzyme, this red enzyme, has a particular lock or active, active site is what it's called. And this, there's one particular substrate or key that fits that particular active site or lock for the enzyme. Once this substrate, once this, these two product or these two uh, reactants, if you will, these two things that we need to react to give us energy, once they fit into that specific lock of the enzyme, the enzyme is then able to reduce the energy needed to make this substrate, make this reactants react together to produce a particular product. The substrate is changed into a usable form of energy. The enzyme stays the same. Kind of like a lock and key method. Here's another way of looking at it. You can take sucrose. It's a dimer, right? Disaccharide. You add an enzyme. This particular enzyme would be called sucrase. Notice enzymes in an ASE. Here's the enzyme. Here is the sucrose. The sucrose is going to fit that particular active site on the enzyme. The reaction occurs quicker because of less activation energy needed. And what is produced? you get glucose and fructose. Quick energy. All right, enzymes can be, be affected by different things. Can cause them to function differently. They can be affected, uh, they cause their shapes to change. And if their shapes change, they don't function properly. They can be affected by temperature. They can be affected by pH of, of a substance, a concentration of a substance. They can be denatured. We've kind of talked about this a little bit, but if something is going to cause a protein or an enzyme to denature, it's going to cause it to change its structure. If it loses that function or that structure, it can't function properly. So that's denaturation. If you add temperature, uh, change the pH, change the concentration, you're going to cause that enzyme or that protein to lose its structure, then it can't function properly. This is called enzyme or the in, inhib, inhibiting an enzyme activity if this happens. If this happens, it changes the, the lock, the key can't fit, the substrate won't work, therefore you don't get, um, uh, you don't get that right reaction.